Please be seated. Yes, Mr. Lazarevi. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh. Question. Mr. Bayagic, I have just completed with one section of your report before the break, and now I would like to move on to Chapter 2 in your report, and that is the establishment and development of the MUP of Republika Srpska. We are going to go more quickly through this topic. In the subsection entitled General Framework, that's page 39, actually item 39, and on page 14 in English, you mentioned a large number of documents and events that in view your view were particularly important in 1991 and 1992 and the crisis in Bosnia. I am not going to go with you through the entire report of yours. Based on item 39, can you tell us, please, in your opinion, which circumstances had decisive impact on the establishment of MUP of the then Serbian Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which was later on transformed into the MUP of Republika Srpska? Answer. Well, this is a list of documents that deal with the general po political situation in the former Yugoslavia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. And within this context, we might highlight some documents that inter alia had an impact on the creation of the first outline of the Ministry of the Interior of the present Republic, Republika Srpska. Sad, uh, Question. In your view, what was the significance of Coutillero's plan, and particularly the fact that the then President of the Socialist Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Ali Izabegovic, abandoned this plan. Answer. Well, the Cutillero's plan in the lengthy process before it was finally adopted certainly constitutes a basis. that all the political protagonists that here too as the basis for setting up their state administration organs, including ministries of the interior. Cutillero's plan, according to the version that I had an opportunity to read, in its chapter D, speaks about the right of the three entities in Bosnia and Herzegovina to establish administration organs, uh, which included uh, Ministry of uh, the Interior as a separate organ. This plan had originally been endorsed by all the three party, parties involved in the crisis in Bosnia and Herzegovina. At any rate, the acceptance of the plan and then the abandonment of the plan of one party, uh, i.e. Mr. Izabegovic, certainly 
uh, didn't go well down with the remaining two parties and it had the impact that it had. Question. I don't think it's necessary that we uh, look uh, into Cutillero's plan. For the record, I would like just to say that this is the document already in court and has previously been used in this court, and that's document 4D169, and the translation version is 1D1156. And I would like to hear your document, to hear your comment on the document on 4D174, and in your binder you will find it under tab 4. This is a dispatch sent by the Collegium of MUP of Bosnia and Herzegovina, dated the 1st of April 1992. Answer, yes, I can see it. Question, can you tell me Uh, what this uh, document is about. I would like to hear your comment. Answer. In short, this document speaks about a meeting of the expert collegium of the then Ministry of the Interior of Bosnia and Herzegovina, at which this Sarajevo plan was being discussed and the possible implementation of Gutiliero plan. In terms of initiating a sort of decentralization of the Ministry of the Interior into three separate entities. In view of the structure of the personnel, it is noticeable that this meeting was attended by the highest official of BH at the time, starting from the minister, his deputies, and all other officials who were members of the Collegium. Question. Excuse me, if you look at the first part of this dispatch, can you tell me what were the general premise, premises exercised by the members of uh, the Collegium of the then Ministry of the Interior of BH? Answer, uh, so these general premises were that first phases or stages of reorganization of MOOP had already been underway. That's the main point. And the Collegium has had been advised that certain legislative foundation has had been laid for the Ministry of the Interior of the Serbian side, i.e. the Serbian Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Question, thank you. In paragraphs 46 to 53, pages 16 to 18, in your report in BCS, and pages 16 to 19 in English, uh, in e-court, you spoke about illegal arming of members of the SDA as one, being one of the reasons conducive to the breakup of the MOOP of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. In that respect, you anal analyzed the number of documents and books which were listed in the footnotes. Can you just tell us briefly, I don't want to dwell on this too long, about this phenomenon, so I'm speaking about the arming of members of the SDS, SDA. 
How did this phenomenon affect the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina? Answer. In any case, the reasons for the setting up of the MOOP and consequently, consequently take into account uh, the Cutileros plan, although I don't think these were the only reasons that uh, exacerbated the crisis, but one of the reasons was definitely operational activities of all three parties. And I here mentioned only one of them. I analyzed the reasons for establishing the first state organs of the future Republika Srpska, which was prompted by secret and illegal arming of certain formations in Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1991 and in spring of 1992. These facts could not have remained clandestine, and they definitely contributed to the worsening of the situation and prompted the initiation of the realization of the plans to establish the Ministry of the Interior of Republika Srpska. Question. Further on in your um, analysis, you spoke about the activities of the HDZ, which was uh, the party of the Croats of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and their aspirations uh, towards political and every other separation from the central government in Sarajevo. This is on pages 54, 15. Could the council please read the pages slowly? Uh, Mr. Lazarevic, the interpreters have kindly asked you to read out the transcript slowly, okay? Pages slowly, please. Thank you. I apologize to the no, interpreters. It's, it's okay, I didn't pay attention to the transcript. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Question. So these are pages 18 and 19 in e court, in BCS, and 19 and 20 in the English version, also in, in court. Mr. Bayagic, is it necessary for me to repeat my question? Answer no, it isn't. Question, thank you. Can you please give me an answer now? Answer. As uh, you can read in certain paragraphs in my report, I focused my attention on the third party, which had certain input in the generating of the crisis in Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is conditionally speaking the Croatian party that I'm talking about. For me, it was particularly indicative because of the dates and years when the mention of first uh, state organs were mentioned within the Croatian community, and particularly uh, the mention of an existence of a sort of Herzeg Bosna in uh, early 1992, as well as the fact that they uh, started forming their own units like HVO and others. So, uh, just as I was speaking about uh, the authorities Sarajevo, I also mentioned the aspirations of uh, the Croatian community. So, all of these aspects can be amalgamated to create a reason that uh, precipitated the activities undertaken by the Serbian side. Question. Let us now move to the next topic in your report, and that is the creation and development of MUP of Republika Srpska in the period 1991-1993. In your report, it is dealt with in paragraph 60 to 91, and you and I will just uh, go through a number of details. 
Can you please first look at paragraph 61 of your analysis? It's on page 20 in e-court. And on page 21 in English. Here you say that all the three ruling uh, ethnic parties strove to exert as much influence as possible on the then MOOP of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Can you give us uh, more details about what this refers to? Answer. In view of the inter-party agreement that was reached in Bosnia and Herzegovina at the time, at the highest level, the certain offices in state administration were allocated according to this percentage ratio. Based on this inter-party agreement, uh, for various reasons, this agreement was violated in that all three parties, by appointing their representatives in the MOOP, uh, strove to occupy the best pos possible position and thereby have an opportunity to have a decisive impact on the policy of MUPO Bosnia and Herzegovina. So that was a process that uh, was concurrently aimed at a personnel policy and was pursued by all three parties. Question. Further on, you spoke about the filling of jobs in MOOP and uh, the departure of Muslim uh, Muslims for training in Croatia. Can, can, can you tell me how did these, these how did these processes affect the overall situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina? Answer. As a state administration organ, the MUP of Bosnia and Herzegovina is part of the executive bar branch and is entitled to issue certain guidelines relating to uh, personnel policy in the MUP. It is very indicative that political parties, and in this particular in instance, the Party of Democratic An uh, Action, exerted a decisive influence on the administration for personnel of the Ministry of the Interior. And I illustrated this with a number of specific examples. Question. Let us look uh, just as one of such this uh, example, and that's document 4D-167. And if we can please have this document uh, brought up in e-court. This is a dispatch sent to the public security station in Bratunac, uh, dated 16 March 92. And that's tab 5 in your binder. Can you tell us uh, what this document is about? Answer. This document is one of the forms of passing on information uh, at a higher level of organization, or rather to a higher level of, of uh, organization uh, compared to the Bratonat station. It uh, speaks about a number of Muslims who had gone uh, to under undertake training or undergo training uh, in Croatia, organized by MUP of Croatia. The chief of the public security station said explicitly that he did not know upon he, whose orders or recommendations these men had gone to uh, undergo training in uh, the MOOP of Croatia. And he also adds that, in, that the Serbs do not trust these people because in view, they could be uh, recruited uh, for the reserve police question. Who signed this document? Answer, it was signed 
Senad Hodžić, the then chief of the uh, public security station. This is as much as I can uh, gather from these documents. Question. In paragraph 74 of your expert analysis, it's on pages 23 to 25 in England, English and 25 and 26. You uh, enlisted some crucial regulations that governed the creation and the development of the MUP of Republika Srpska. Let us go through some of them. The first document that I would like to show you is 4D 168, and in your binder it's tab 6. That's the Constitution of the Serbian Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Let us look at Chapter 4, Article 68, that's pages 5 and 6 in e court in BCS, and in English as well. Let us first look at the heading of this chapter. Can you tell us what is the heading of this uh, chapter uh, where Article 68 is? That's Chapter 4 of the Constitution of the Serbian Republic of Bosnia-Herzegovina of 1992, and it's entitled The Rights and Duties of the Republic. Question, thank you. Let us now move on to Article 68. Item 2. Pursuant to this article, answer, uh, pursuant to Article 68, uh, the obligation of the Republic is to provide and to secure various arrangements or, or uh, areas of life enumerated under numbers 1 to 15, and under number 2, defense and security of the Republic is specified, which is directly related to the Ministry of the Interior. Question. Item 13 on the next page. Answer. Item 13, the state should regulate and provide for the functioning of the competent governmental bodies. Question, what is your understanding of the provisions we just looked at as regards the creation and organization of the Ministry of the Interior in Republika Srpska? Answer. If the then Republic, uh, Serbian Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina had the right to uh, organize uh, the activities in certain walks of life, uh, we can see that uh, they enumerated 15 of the most important such areas, much as would be in any other state. If they had such a right, then they also could uh, get involved in the organization, the competence, and the work of such state agencies that have to do with security. Question, thank you. Let us move on to the next document. It is the law on government of the Republic of the Serbian people in Bosnia-Herzegovina and E-Court. It is 4D173 in your binder. It is tab 7. Let us look at Chapter 2, Article 6 of the Law on Government. It is page 1 in E-Court, in the BCS, in the English, page 2. Do you have Article 6 in front of you? Answer, I do. Question. If we look at Article 6, Item 1, 
What can you tell us about that? Answer. We can see that in keeping with Article 5, the government consists of the Prime Minister, two Deputy Prime Ministers, and 13 members ministers. In Article 5, it is further stated that presidents of executive bodies and uh, districts are, and are ex officio members of the government. And then we have the stipulation of all of the various uh, areas of uh, government that needs to have appo uh, officials appointed to. Question. I believe you should repeat. Answer. I can repeat, certainly. Question. Can you tell us which ministries are those that are being formed in the then Republic of the Serbian people in Bosnia Herzegovina. Answer. There were 13 ministries. I can enumerate. First, internal affairs. And then national defense. The Ministry of Justice. Finance. Foreign Affairs, Economic Affairs, Agriculture, Forestry and Water Management. Question. I do not wish to interrupt, but answer. Well, and so on and so forth, but I believe the first few are the most important ones. question. Let us move on to the next document. It is 4D170. It is the law on state administration dated the 23rd of March 1992. Let us have a look at chapter 4, article 19. That is page 3 in the BCS version. In the English, the same. In your binder, tab 8. Do you have the document before you? Answer, I do. But which article again? Question, article 19. Thank you. What is regulated by Article 19? Answer. Chapter 4, Organization of Administrative Organs, Article 19. It says, administrative organs shall be established as ministries, secretariats, and administrations. That is to say, the law foresaw three types of state bodies, the ministries, secretariats, and administrations. Question. As regards the field of internal affairs, was it also arranged according to this provision? Answer together with the law on the government and the law on administrative uh, government um, government administration these two pieces of legislation organize the rather prescribe the organization of the ministry of the interior of the then serbian republic which is later to be dubbed republika srpska question the next document is the law on defense which is 4D181, tab 68, in your binder, dated the 1st of June, 1992. 
znači the article that i want you to focus on is in e-court at page 2 in the bcs and pages 2 and 3 in the english on regulation it regulates well first of all article 7 what does that regulate answer if i may have a moment question what does it regulate in its introductory part answer article 7 its introductory part regulates certain areas which fall under the competence of the president of the Serbian Republic of BNH uh, with regard to organizing defense preparations. Question. Let us look at item 3 of the article. What is the authority given to the president of the Serbian Republic of BNH? Answer. Item 3 of article 7. It states that the President of the Serbian Republic of BNH operates and commands the army in peace and wartime. Question. Thank you. Item 6 of the same article is next. What does it regulate? I read it. The President has the right to define the basis for organization and strength of the police force, issue orders for utilization of the police in case of war, imminent threat of war, in order to protect the rights and duties of the Republic and its citizens and their duties and obligations accorded by the Constitution. Uh, this presidential role has to do with the police. Question. In this law, there is a mention of the army of Republika Srpska. In keeping with this law, is the Ministry of the Interior mentioned as an element of the armed forces? Answer, no, not in this law. Question. Let us now go to Article 10 of the law. It is on the same page in the BCS. In the English version, it is pages 3 and 4 in e-court. Let us look at the bottom part of the article. There is a subheading, Ministry of the Interior. Have you found it? Answer, yes. Question. What are the competences of the Minister of the Interior, according to this regulation, that have to do with the defense of the Republic? Answer, I can tell you right away. According to Article 10, the Minister of the Interior is competent to organize and implement its own preparations for defense and work in a situation of an imminent threat of war or of war. It organizes security measures and provides uh, security for objects important for the defense and organizes preparations of the police in the states of uh, state necessity as defined here, uh, these being the threat of war and uh, state of war. Question. Let us go next to some of the most important regulation concerning the police, and that is the law on internal affairs. Could we next have 4D172 in e-court? Official Gazette 4 slash 92. It is tab 9. The date, 23 March 1992. Do you have it? Da. Answer yes. I pogledajmo prvo član 3 ovog zakona. Let us look at uh, article 3 of the law. On se nalazi na stra u sistemu i korta. It is in e-court page 2 in the BCS in the English version page 1.
how does this law regulate the field of internal affairs in terms of police tasks? I'll answer. According to this article, and as part of this law, the role of the police is the following. Tasks and activities related to public security, tasks and activities related to national security, as well as tasks and activities relating to certain administrative uh, issues, such as names, places of residence, citizenship, registers, holding public gatherings and meetings, and so on and so forth. Question. Let us move to Article 5. It is the same page, page 2 in eCourt, in the BCS, and page 1 in the English. According to Article 5, who was entrusted with internal affairs uh, activities referred to in this article? Answer. Naturally, Article 5 entrusts the Ministry with the internal affairs, the Ministry of the Interior, that is. Question. In keeping with this law, in addition to the Ministry of the Interior at headquarters, which other two organizational units were there uh, within the MOOP? Answer. Those were the public security and state security services. Question. Let's talk about the public security service for a moment. Let us go to Article 15 of the law. In E Court, it is page 3 in the BCS and page 2 in the English version. I'm talking about Article 15. What does it regulate? Answer. Article 15 of the law regulates the competence of the public security service in terms of certain, uh, certain activities and tasks. I won't go into all the detail, but it has to do with uh, administrative and specialized uh, services as one area. Another area is uh, protecting law and order and uh, property of the citizens. The third area is crime prevention and enforcement, as well as certain societal services such as uh, dealing with the consequence of states of emergency and so on and so forth. Question. Let us move to Article 16. I'd like you to focus on the last few lines in e -court. It is page 3 in the BCS and the English version. Pages 2 and 3. We can see here that certain reserve police force members are mentioned. Can you tell me what was the role and position of the reserve police force? Answer. As we can see, Article 16 defines activities in the field of public law and order and property safety of the citizens, as well as combating crime. It can be done by the active duty policemen as well as members of the reserve police force. Question. 
question. Let's go to the next article of this law that I want to analyze. It is Article 26. It is page 4 in the BCS, in court. The same page in English. Do you have Article 26 before you answer? I do. Question. In keeping with the article, except for the ministry at headquarters, which are which uh, regional units were there as part of the ministry? In addition to the ministry at headquarters, there were regional units uh, such as. Uh, public security centers, and then the next lower level in territorial terms were public security stations. Question. Let us move to Article 28 of the law, page 4 in the BCS, in the English version, page 4 as well. In keeping with Article 28, how many centers uh, for public security were there envisaged by the law from 1992 and where? Answer, according to Article 28, public security center, centers of the MUP were in Banja Luka, Trebinje, Doboj, Sarajevo and Bijeljina. There were five. Banja Luka, Trebinje, Doboj, Sarajevo, and Bijeljina. Uh, article 30 is next. It is page 4 in the BCS. The same page in the English version. What does Article 30 refer to? Answer. Article 30 sets out some other levels of organization within the MOOP. More precisely, it says that police stations are to be set up within the security services centers and also a number of uh, reserve police stations. In other words, these police stations and reserve police stations were within the framework of the public security station. And in the second part of this article, its last sentence, it says whenever necessary, uh, i.e. in specific situation, a police station can have its detached uh, squads outside its headquarters. I'm talking about militia. So, question. There were smaller organizational units with respect to the police station. Yes, within uh, the public security station, there were uh, uh, police stations and also some detached uh, squads outside. Uh, the words used is militia, and uh, in Serbian language, words militia and police are synonyms. So uh, having in mind that in English, word militia might have a negative connotation, I would just like to draw the, your attention to this fact just in order to, to avoid any misunderstanding. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Lazarevich, we'll take note of that.
ovaj dokument. Question. Uh, we will no longer need this document for now. Let us move to the next one. That's tab number 10 in your binder. That's exhibit 4D192. That's the set of rules on internal organization of MOOP in the state of an immediate threat of war or a state of war from September 1992. I have to advise Chamber that we do not have the translation of this document and I think the best approach would be if we continue by reading uh, the relevant paragraphs uh, that I wish to discuss with this witness. Mr. Bayagic, in your report, I have found a piece of information that in April 1992, Interpreters Connection 1993, a set of rules were adopted that had the uh, identical uh, title as the one mentioned earlier. Do you know the reason why uh, two set of rules, identical set of rules, were adopted on different dates? Answer? Well, the main reason is probably, well, actually, this is identical uh, uh, text. At the bottom of the front page, it reads uh, September 1992. And as you can see, in the upper part, above the words, official secret, strictly confidential, there's a number 10-3-93, which means that is probably March 1993. So I presume that probably uh, in March 1993, this set of rules had been uh, debated and that in 1992, it was just the draft, and that in the, the identical form and with the identical wording, it was adopted in April uh, 1993. Question. Can you confirm, please, once again, practically there are absolutely no differences in the content of these two documents? Uh, answer. Absolutely no difference whatsoever. So. It's all the same which document you take. Question. Let us now look at Article 2 of this set of rules. And since we unfortunately do not have a translation, I'm going to read it for the record. Heading of this chapter is Roman numeral uh, 2, and it says organizational units. Appropriate basic and internal organizational units shall be established within the Ministry for the purpose of carrying out uh, duties and activities from uh, its purview, as follows. Number one, at the seat of the Ministry, Administration, Special Police Brigade, comma, police detachment, comma, squad, comma, school, comma, inspectorate, comma, section, comma, office, comma, group, and secretariat, semicolon. Number two, outside the seat dash center comma sector 
Public Security Station, comma, Department, comma, Police Station, and Station Department, comma, Section, comma, Group, and Secretariat, full stop. Now, after reading Article 2 of this set of rules, can you explain to me the difference between organizational units intended for carrying out duties in the seat of the ministry and outside the seat of the ministry? Answer. Well, there are certain organizational units in the seat of the ministry or some forms of organization that functionally deal with specific problems or they are uh, concentrated on specific areas of interest. However, when we speak about organizational structure of the ministry outside of its seat, that is, territorial organization of units at a lower level than the ones uh, in the ministry itself, that we have already mentioned, and these are two organization, main, two main organizational levels outside the seat. Question. Let us now move to Article 7 of this set of rules, and I'm going to read it for the record. The title uh, under Article 7 reads, Organizational Units at the Seat of the Ministry, Article 7. The following basic uh, organizational units uh, shall be established at the seat of ministry. Number one, police administration. Number two, administration for uh, prevention and detection of crimes. Three, inspectorate for fire and explosion protection. Number four, administration for analytical and information tasks and the operation of the IT system. Number five, communications and crypto protection administration. Number six, administration for legal personnel affairs and uh, issues relating to aliens. Number seven, secondary school of internal affairs. Number eight, administration for financial and technical affairs. And number nine, office of the minister. Can you tell me what was the nature of these units that we have just listed here? Answer. All these organizational units that you listed constitute organizational part of the ministry at its seat. So that's the headquarters of the ministry. And we can see, question, please go on, answer. And we see that we have functional principle of organizing the work processes. Your Honours, I 
feel that I should apologize for not having a translation of this document. This is the only document that we still haven't been provided with translation. We addressed the CLSS quite a long time ago, but for some reason we still haven't received it. And I have to assure you that this is the only one that we don't have a translation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lazarevich. Yes, Mr. Van der Puy. Mr. President, I understand that we, we actually have a, a translated version of it, and I, I think we can provide that to, um, to Defense Council if that will assist the court. Makes things easier. <coughs> We've still got another five uh, minutes to go. Huh? <coughs> Mr. Bayagic, let us just look at Article 8 of this set of rules, and I'm going to read it for the record. And hopefully tomorrow we shall have an opportunity to work with uh, an English translation which will expedite the process. So, Article 8. Organizational units referred to items 1 to 3 of the pre in the previous article shall be part of the public security service, full stop. Organizational units referred to under items 3 to 9 in the previous article shall carry out other internal and joint affairs. So pursuant to Article 8, which of these units were part of the public security service? Answer. Part of the public security service, which is an integral part of the ministry, were a police administration, administration for uh, preventing and uh, detecting crime, and in the Inspectorate for Fire and Explosion Protection. Stop now, because the next article that I intend right, to quote yes, to the yes, witness yes. is a very long one. It won't be okay. appropriate. That's fine. So we'll continue tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Thank you. All rise, Pekia Boulevard.